So, um, Gert, when when let's just go into where you at the moment feel things are likely to go. What really do you think is likely to happen next? Because the WHO has said the pandemic is over. This is technically now become an endemic cold. Why would you still be concerned? <clears throat> Yeah, well, it, uh, Philip, it, it starts, in fact, uh, indeed, with uh, scrutinizing this type of statements, which, frankly speaking, I cannot understand. But knowing that the top management of the WHO is completely, completely, I'm nevertheless not surprised about this stupid statement. Because everyone can see that with regard to um, the, the pandemic, well, first of all, it's very clear that we have no sterilizing immunity. That's very clear. So um, at an individual level, that means that you will still have a, a significant amount of symptomatic infections at an individual level. That is, is that what we are seeing? Yes, that is what we are seeing. We still have considerable amount of symptomatic infection. At the population level, this would mean that you don't have herd immunity, right? So practically speaking, that would mean that the transmission of the virus is not under control. Is the transmission of the virus under control? No, the transmission of the virus is not under control. On top of this, it's also very, very clear that the virus continues to evolve. Eh? So the virus has already been uh, evolving from uh, no longer being, you know, uh, uh, neutralizable to uh, being, uh, you know, more infectious and, uh, and even in vitro more virulent. So the virus is, is clearly still evolving. All this goes completely, completely against the idea or the concept of the pandemic being over. And um, so that's where it starts. If the pandemic is not over, if the virus continues to evolve, if there are still some symptomatic infections and if the transmission is still going on, the next question is, of course, where is this going? And um, depending on, uh, on your next question, Philip, I will just tell you that for me, it is very, very clear that the virus has now engaged in the last straight line to increasing its virulence. And you can, and, and it's a, a quite slow process, but what we can see compared to um, the, previous, the previous observations with the pre-Omicron variants and even with the early Omicron variants is that the infectivity of the virus is no longer dramatically increasing. So it seems like that kind of potential of the virus has been exhausted, right? So, um, but the virus can still replicate. Right? We, 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 we don't control the virus. You know, parties, pro-vax, anti-vax, etc., are trying to control each other, right? But nobody's controlling the virus. And nobody seems to care about this, right? And, uh, and that is what I'm very, very worried uh, about because um, based on the uh, molecular principles and immunological insights that I've described in my book, for me, there is absolutely no doubt that the, um, the, the prevention of severe disease that is right now, according to my understanding, conditioned by non-neutralizing antibodies will completely wane and that, uh, as we have seen for Omicron, remember, Omicron came all of a sudden for many people out of the blue, completely unexpected, very sud suddenly, that we will very suddenly see a steep increase in hospitalizations and severe disease. And by the way, in some countries, we are already seeing that these rates are picking up again, that they are increasing, right? So all this may be, uh, you know, sufficient as a first answer to your question, why am I worried and what I'm thinking uh, is, is going on with the virus right now. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking just about the virus. I, I think that the rest of the world is simply focusing on the wrong thing right now. The thing to focus upon 
is the evolution of the virus. Because if that doesn't go the right way, it will affect all of us, right? So that is, that is something that uh, I think doesn't gain enough attention right now because people think, you know, uh, Philip, I, could, I, could, I would be the best pronoun, a proponent of uh, defending the, the narrative. Guys, what are you worried about? You know, hospitalization rates, severe disease, mortality, it's all under control. Measures have been uh, relaxed. Uh, the spread of the virus has diminished. Uh, so we are entering into a phase of endemicity. No, we are entering in a phase of disastrous immune escape. That is my conclusion and interpretation. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Rob, I, I want you because of your wonderful pediatric expertise as well. I want you to what you've heard there with Gert. Imagine explaining that again in a very simple way. How? What is he really? I mean, just in case some people didn't get it, I think that I want you to just say it again in a quick summary. Can you do that? Well, that's what I've tried to do in my video presentation. Uh, this is a very complex situation, but I think what Geert is saying is that we are experiencing a calm before the storm. It's a reassuring calm. I think he's pointing out that those who think the pandemic is subsiding and, he and heading into endemicity, because the virus seems to be becoming milder and milder and less of a threat. I think what they are missing, uh, Geert is saying, is that they don't realize that uh, our immune system in a variety of ways, and in three main ways that Geert has highlighted in his book, the immune system has been protecting us over these, particularly during the Omicron era, it has figured out some mechanisms that uh, protect us uh, to a certain degree from severe disease. Uh, but what he's saying is that those protective mechanisms uh, will ultimately fail. <clears throat> the virus will ultimately uh, overcome those protective mechanisms. And, uh, and the biggest threat is that the virus will overcome the, the protection against virulence of the disease. Uh, one thing that Geert explains in great detail is that the non-neutralizing antibodies that the vaccine induces um, uh, do have a virulence inhibiting effect. They can uh, protect us from infection in the lower respiratory tract or such severe infection in the lower respiratory tract. But what he's saying is that the virus ultimately is going to be able to overcome that virulence inhibiting effect of the, of the uh, non-neutralizing antibodies. And when that happens, uh, we will no longer have that protection. 